So yes, yeah, first of all, start lying down, um, either with your knees bent or your legs long. And we're going to actually be using another of the Thich Nhat Hanh meditations today, but um, a different one from last week. And so the one last week we had all these beautiful images in and they may, I know Friday morning, you will quite like all of this sort of, um, these um, images, but this one is much more about the breathing. So it's a bit more rooted in your body. And it starts very much in the same way and we'll start in this same way. Hi Tracy. We're just starting lying down when you're ready. So we're going to start with bringing your hands onto the front of your body. So you can feel the movement of your breath in the front of your body. So lying down, hands on the front of your body. And this meditation starts the same as the last one. So breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. So as you rest your hands on your body and you feel the movement of your breath in your body, you can say these words to yourself, breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And just have a couple more cycles of breath, feeling that movement of the breath in your body and letting the weight of your body settle down onto the ground. So as I was mentioning to people who were here earlier, we're going to have this focus around, to start with, just releasing tension from the neck and shoulders. So even if you don't feel tense there, hopefully it will feel nice. You can keep your hands on your belly if you like, or you can let your arms come to rest on the floor beside you. And what we're going to do is to start with, you're going to let your head roll from the center to the right and back to the center. So we're just going one way with the head. Usually we let the head roll to the right and to the left. But to start with, we're just going to do a little bit of letting the head roll from the center to the right and see how it feels. So making sure you're not pushing it at all. Good. And just noticing how it feels, stay very much within your comfort zone. And then see how it feels to go the other way. So let your head roll from the center over to the left. a few times. So maybe once more letting the head roll from the centre to the left and then settling the back of your head on the floor. Letting a breath come in, letting a breath leave you. And what we're going to do is then take your fingers up and your hands up to the back of your neck and you're going to do a little bit of massaging with your fingers. So keep your head resting on the floor. Do a little bit of massaging into your neck. So I'm just sort of, yeah, sort of circling and pressing my fingers either side of my spine in my neck. And you can also go up into the base of the skull a little bit. That feels nice. You know, and if things feel tender, then you, you don't have to really dig around with loads of pressure. Just do what feels good. And then also coming down a little bit into the tops of the shoulders, either side of the neck. So not the shoulder joints, but those muscles either side of the neck that can feel very knotty. And again, do a little bit of circling and pressing with your fingertips. 
You can go back into the neck again a little bit more. If you find a place that needs a bit of work, a bit of attention, then carry on there. And then when you're ready, when you feel that, you know, you've got some attention. So it's part about bringing attention there. It helps us to feel, you know, what's going on in our neck. Helps the blood flow, the blood supply there. So release your arms. And now let your head roll to the right and to the left. And see how that feels now. And from rolling your head to the right and to the left, then let the head settle down the centre of the back of the head on the floor, letting the breath come in, letting the breath be for you. And we're just going to let the shoulders and the head rest and we're going to come to move a little bit lower down in the body. So you're going to have your left leg long and you're going to bend your right knee and stand your right foot on the floor. And you're familiar with this movement, you're going to start that movement of pressing down into your right foot, letting your pelvis tilt over towards the left. So keeping heavy and pass passive through the left side of the pelvis, the left side of the body. And that's it, pressing into the right foot and seeing how this feels. So this movement, as the right side of the pelvis lifts, that movement translates up through the side of your body. Keep your shoulders really relaxed, keep your arms really relaxed on the floor. Maybe once more on this side. And then swap sides and do the same thing with the other foot standing on the floor. So the left knee bent, the left foot standing on the floor, lengthening out the right leg. Good, and seeing how it feels on this side. And again, keeping the shoulders relaxed, keeping the neck feeling easy. So perhaps once or twice more on this side. And then it might be nice to lengthen both legs out on the floor. Let the legs be long. You can give them a little bit of a roll. Yes, if it's nice to actually fold the knees in, Hilary, you can also do that. So we're just going to come back to our breathing briefly. So just do whatever, do whatever you want to do with your legs for a moment. Yes, very nice, Alice, shaking them out. And then settle down with your hands on the front of your body. So coming back to that focus of breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And feeling the movement of the breath within your body. And letting your body settle, letting your body soften. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. Then 
okay and then I'd like you to bend both knees and bring both feet to stand on the floor yes and I think probably now do rest your arms down by your sides like that Sharon good and come to tilting your pelvis on the floor so tipping your pelvis towards your head and away from your head so your lower back arches and then you flatten out that curve in your lower back and seeing how this feels. So yes, not going all the way just yet to bridge pose, but that is where we're heading. Just do a little bit more tilting of the pelvis on the floor. So it's this small movement where we shift our weight towards the top and bottom of the pelvis. And then we can go all the way on into bridge pose. And then two or three times, roll up and down through bridge pose and see how it feels. So I've been doing quite a lot of bridge pose this week in my own practice in the classes because I think it has lots of benefits and there's lots of different versions. So in a moment, we're going to be doing a bridge pose variation. Make sure as you come into bridge pose, you feel as planted as possible in your feet. Sheila, I'm wondering if your feet could be a little bit wider apart. Yeah, that looks, yeah, see how it feels. If you think, if you don't like it, then change it back to how it was. And then what you're going to do with your bridge pose is you're going to roll up into another bridge pose. But as you roll back down, I want you to go off to the left side of your spine. So as you place your back onto the floor, you're going off to the left of your spine. So you're placing the sort of left side of the back down. Roll up through the spine again. And then as you go back down, play, go off to the right. And then as you come back up, let the spine come up in the center. And carry on doing this a few times. So rolling up through your spine and then going down once through the left side, once through the right side. So you're just trying to go off to the side of your spine. So it's like we put these new pathways, one on the right side, one on the left side. Looks like someone else is joining us. You just see how this feels. Hi, Al. And then perhaps go back a couple of times. So Al, you can, we're gonna do one more, just a little bit of lying down and breathing. So you could join us for that. So lie, lie down. We've just been doing some bridge pose, but I think it'd be nice for you to lie down. Hi Donna. So Donna, lie down when you're ready. We were just doing some bridge pose, but we're gonna do a little bit of breathing on our backs. And so those of you who have just come back to doing a normal bridge pose, if after that bridge pose, when you've done a couple more, you want to take, fold your knees into your chest. Then do so. And then one last time before we come off our backs, settle down. So if you've folded your knees in, you've taken your legs up to the ceiling, you've given them a shake out, all those things you feel that you want to do, anything else. Um, one last time, we'll come back to the Thich Nhat Hanh. So um, Alison and Donna, who've just joined, we're using another Thich Nhat Hanh meditation today. It's, um, what's I going to say, less, it's more about the breathing and less um, flowery. So hands settling down one last time, bringing the hands to your, the front of your body, connecting with your breathing. 
Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So for a couple more cycles of breath, feel the movement of your breath in your body. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And then from here, you can take your time. You might want a few breaths on your side. We're going to come over onto hands and knees. We're not going to be on hands and knees that long. We're going to do a little bit of cat, a little bit of tail wagging, and then we'll be making our way into standing. So come, yes, come onto hands and knees when you're ready. And just let yourself settle here. We're doing a lot of those rolling up and down movements on our back into bridge pose. So see how it feels when you're ready. To do similar movements in cats. So rounding the back to the ceiling. Think about your neck and shoulders. Really let the head go. Feel wide across the back of the shoulders. Dipping your spine down to the floor. So using cat to help carry on this process of releasing tension and helping us to feel our body. So a bit more rounding and dipping. And then you can do a little bit of tail wagging. It might just be wagging your tail, or it might be, I feel quite like I'd like to do this one, the little fishes, so swinging the lower legs from side to side. That's really quite nice and passive. And of course, any combination of adding the two together that you'd like to do. So it might be rounding your back to the ceiling and wagging your tail at the same time. In a moment, we're going to be coming up through dog pose into standing. So if you need to take the weight off your hands for a moment, sit back over your heels. Be an up or down kneeling. Give your hands a shake out. And then on hands and knees, tuck your toes under. And just before we come into dog, do a little bit of rocking forwards and back with your toes tucked under, if this is possible. Alice, I know this will be challenging for one of your foot. We're going to come back to a bit more of this later and go a bit further with it. But all I'd like you to do from this now is to, next time you rock your hips back over your heels, stay there. See if you can let your shoulders soften a little bit, leaning through the bones of your arms, picking your knees up off the floor, coming into dog pose. And just seeing how this dog pose feels. The so Donna and Alison, who've just joined us, we've got this bit of a focus today on releasing the neck and shoulders. So in dog pose, really let your head go and see what you can do to help your shoulders feel as undone as possible. So a few breaths in dog, bending one knee, bending both knees. And then little by little, hand by hand, walking in to a forward bend. Seeing how that feels, if you want to bend your knees and rest your elbows on your thighs, you can do. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then when you're ready, rolling up into standing or walking your hands up the front of your thighs. So we end up in standing. And so in standing, looking at your feet, organizing your feet, hip width apart and parallel. Start with a little bit of swaying. So swaying your weight over one leg and foot, over the other leg and foot. Good. That's nice. And then settling in the centre. And three times we're going to breathe in, let the draw the shoulders up, and then as you exhale, drop your shoulders. So breathe in, drawing your shoulders up. Try not to bring any tension in. <sighs> or yeah, try not to pull them, I suppose. We will bring in tension as we gather up the shoulders. So breathing in. 
and then exhaling, dropping the shoulders, giving the arms a bit of a shake out. Are we still there? It's, yeah, good, because the internet connection seems a bit unstable. So remember, you can always press your space bar if you need to speak to me. We're going to, I just have to blow my nose, seems rather bad for hay fever today. We're going to come on into this one, where we're swinging our arms, slapping our hands onto our body. And in this one, think about how the shoulders can be heavy and relaxed. Carry on doing that while I just blow my nose. Good, very nice. So we're doing a few of our sort of familiar things to start with in standing, but with perhaps a focus on releasing the shoulders a little bit more than usual. So in this one, we just want to really feel that the shoulders can stay heavy, the arms are as fluid as possible. And then let that go, settle back down in standing. So looking at your feet, settling your feet. And we're gonna to come to some of our reaching up movements, but with just one arm to start with. So bring your right arm up, doesn't really matter, one arm up, and reach up into that arm, shift your weight into that same leg, and then release your arm. So we're going to do this a few times on the same side. So reaching up into the arm, shifting your weight into that leg, the other heel may even lighten on the floor, and then release. <sighs> So one more time on this side, reaching up through that arm, shifting your weight into that same leg, the other arm's heavy and floppy, and then release. And the same on the other side, so reaching up through the arm, shifting your weight into the other leg, and then release. So you're, sorry, you're shifting your weight into the same leg as the arm you're reaching up with. I think you all know that, but just in case you're getting confused. Good. And one last time, reaching up, reaching up, release the other arm, release the other arm, and then come down. And then we're going to roll down into a forward bend. So really thinking about giving away the head and the arms. Remember, again, you can always stop with your knees bent and your elbows resting on your thighs if your lower back needs the support. Carry on going all the way down if that's comfortable and possible for you. Can the arms be really heavy? Can you let the shoulders go? Can you let the head go? Let a breath come in. As you exhale, rolling back into standing, keeping the arms floppy all the way back up again and then we will come on to the reaching movement with both arms up so into this one that we often do reaching up through one arm shifting our weight into that leg and foot reaching up through the side of the body good Good. Just a couple more times, reaching up, reaching up. And I think I'm just going to, as I do this, check my notes. We're going to be coming back down into another forward bend. And if you want to, from that forward bend, go on into a squat. If you need something under your heels, have it to hand. So from reaching up, once more, roll down into a forward bend. Have a couple of breaths in the forward bend, letting the head go, letting the arms go. And then from here, you can move on, if you like, on into a squat, if it would be nice for your lower back. So I know that squatting is a bit challenging um, for many of us, but it is, once you're there in the squat, really good for the lower back. So pop something under your heels if you need that. You don't have to. But if that helps you be able to stay in squatting and let your pelvis drop. Have a breath or two here. Just, and again, in squatting, make sure your shoulders are as relaxed as possible. One thing, I won't, we won't stay here too long, one thing which can be quite nice for the neck is to here, interlink your fingers around the base of your skull and let your head fall forward. So this can be quite nice. So you're not pulling on your head, it's just the weight of your hands there. And then let's come out of squat. Can we reverse this movement? Can we shift our weight forwards onto the balls of our feet, get rid of the block or the wedge or the book, then start to send the heels down, 
back into a forward bend, let your head go, let your arms go, let a breath come in, and then rolling up into standing all the way up. Once you're up in standing, have a little shake out of arms and legs. And we're going to come on into that movement where we rock our weight forwards onto the balls of our feet. So just make sure when you settle your feet back down, they're hip width apart and parallel. And then just start that process of shifting your weight forwards onto the balls of your feet, letting the heels come up off the floor. And we'll come in and out of this one several times. So coming forwards onto the balls of your feet coming back down again. As you do so, try to keep the shoulders relaxed, keep the arms heavy and floppy. So the next time we come up, we'll stay there for a cycle of breath or two, but with the arms hanging and the shoulders dropping. Can we feel the breath come in? Can we feel the breath leave us? Very nice, let's do it again. Come back down, give the legs a shake out. Let's do it again and this time take the arms up as well if you're feeling steady. So just settle the feet, looking at the feet, rocking your weight forwards onto the balls of your feet. Let a breath come in. As the breath leaves you, you can bring your arms up. Kate, I think that's you joining us. I've got to go and have a little look. Um, other Kate? Yes, good, hello. So up into your little balance on the balls of your feet. So if you're still balancing there, very well done. In your own time, coming back down, let the heels come down and let your arms swoop back down into yet another forward bend. Let the head go, let the arms go. And you can come into your weeping willow movements in this forward bend by sweeping your arms around the front of your feet. That's it. And just trying to be really sort of soft and fluid here. Imagining your fingers are the, the, the leaves, beautiful silver green leaves of the weeping willow trailing in a river. Good. You might then want to pause in the middle, have a breath or two. As you exhale down into your heels, your head and your arms and your shoulders tumble forwards. Let the breath come in. As you exhale, sink into your heels roll up into standing and a little shake out here. So we're going to be coming to the backs of our mats and we're going to be coming down through a forward bend and dog pose and doing some things on hands and knees. We'll start off like we do for some salute. So if you come to the back of your mat and bring your hands into prayer pose, have a little look down at your feet. So make sure your feet are hip width apart and parallel. And take a moment here, just feeling yourself in standing. So you could even close your eyes, feeling your footprints on the floor, feeling the contact of your hands, letting a breath come in, letting a breath leave you. And then when you're ready, Open your eyes, let a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Drop your shoulders away from your ears, let a breath come in. And then curling down very fluidly, always think about firms here, firms curled up into your forward bend. Let your head go, let your arms go. Feel those heels rooted into the ground. And then when you're ready, walking your hands forwards into dog pose. Big hand prints on the floor. I'm just having a look at you, looks very nice. See how dog pose feels from here. Sometimes when we walk into dog pose like this, the shoulders can feel a bit more tense. So do what you can to let the shoulders soften. It's usually bending the knees more. Make sure you're really letting your head go. <sighs> And obviously breathing, but breathing will help everything to soften. And from this dog pose, we're coming down onto hands and knees. So on hands and knees, we're going to be bringing one foot forwards into a lunge. 
So first of all, bring that foot in between your hands and walk your back leg away from you. And I think maybe have your back toes tucked under in the lunges we're going to do today. So we're doing three variations of lunge. So this is the first one, our really standard lunge, our foot in between our hands. In all of the lunges, we're trying to give the weight of the pelvis to the floor. And it's really quite stretchy through the front of that back leg thigh. Now, from here, you're going to walk your front foot out to the side a bit more, so that then both hands can come onto the inside of the front foot. Have a couple more breaths here. If possible, it's really nice here to be on the palms of your hands. So, on the flats of your hands, if that works. If, if not, you could be on your knuckles or your fingertips. And particularly for the next stage, if you want to do this, where you're going to be picking, and Sarah, not you, picking your back knee off the ground. <sighs> to make it even more stretchy. <sighs> and if, you're, if you've got your hands here like this, you're used to almost a bit like plank pose. You're leaning down through the bones of your arms and you're using your hands quite a bit for support. Okay, let the back knee come down again. You could untuck your toes if you like, and you're going to walk your front knee back in towards between your hands. And then come back onto your hands and knees. Now, Sarah, I was thinking that you could do a twist in your lunge if you wanted a variation, but that might be worse. So then <laughs> you might not want to do that. Bring your other foot forwards between your hands. But I don't know if that felt like twist. If, felt, if turning towards your front leg felt that something you wanted to do, you could do that because you're in a sort of low, a, a small lunge. So first of all, your foot's between your hands. You walk your back leg away. You want to feel that your front knee is over your front heel. <sighs> we have the toes tucked under in the back foot. What are our shoulders doing in lunge? Can we make sure tension? What's it like then to walk your front foot out to the side? So your hands come, both hands now on the inside of that front foot. Can you put the palms of your hands on the ground? Can you use your arms a bit like um, plank pose here to help support you? And then you could take your back knee off the ground. <sighs> and have a few breaths here. So we're really stretching the back heel away from us. This is a lot of sort of stretching and opening through the front of the pelvis. And then coming back down, let the back knee come onto the floor. Let your foot walk back between your hands and then ease your way out of lunge. And you're going to fold back into child pose just briefly, but it just, yeah. All that opening of lunge, we can just fold now and see how it feels. We come into child, let the elbows rest on the ground, let the forehead touch the ground. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. We'll spend a bit longer in child pose in a moment. So from this child pose, plant your hands on the ground and come up onto hands and knees. So usually when we do that, we end up in a longer hands and knees. So I'd like you to be in a longer hands and knees position. So your hands are further forwards than your shoulders. And probably most of you then realize what we're going to do, which is to start to rock forwards towards face up dog. But you can be quite tentative with this, particularly if your lower back is feeling a little bit vulnerable and if that's the case if you're rocking forwards towards face up dog and you think okay my lower back could really do with a bit more length tuck your toes under round your back to the ceiling rock your hips back over your heels so we're going to travel into face up dog rounding the back if you like so as you exhale round your back to the ceiling Travel forwards into face up dog and then untuck the toes. Just see if the lower back feels a bit happier. We can repeat that again. So we can start to rock back. We can tuck our toes under. We can round our back to the ceiling, all the way back to the hips being over the heels. Let a breath come in. Exhaling, rounding your back to the ceiling. Look back as you move forward. 
until your shoulders are over your hands and then you look forwards, untuck your toes into face up dog. See if your lower back feels a bit happier. You can do that once more if you like. So rocking back, tucking the toes under, rounding the back, letting a breath come in. So it's really helpful to travel forwards into face up dog on an out breath. Exhaling, rounding your back, traveling forwards. When you end up in face up dog, that's the time to let a breath come in. And then after this face up dog, I think child pose would probably be nice. But remember, you've always got the option. So Kate, you've got the option of lying on your belly. This is Kate M. Anyone else who prefers to lie on their belly rather than do child pose or kneeling. And we're going to settle, we're going to come back to the Thich Nhat Hanh. So um, we had this Thich Nhat Hanh meditation, those of you who joined late, we were focusing on today, breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. So just be wherever you prefer to be. You could be kneeling, you can be in child pose, you can be lying on your belly. We're just going to have a few more cycles of maybe three more cycles of breath. Kneeling, child pose, lying on your belly. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. Feeling the movement of our breath in our body. giving ourselves this opportunity to be absorbed in the sensations of the breath. As the breath fills us, as the breath empties us. Then we're going to come back onto hands and knees. We're going to move back through dog pose, back through a forward bend into standing and do a little bit more in standing. So when you're ready, come onto hands and knees. Let's take a moment to really look at your hands and place your hands on the floor. So they're big, they're big and they're aware. And tucking your toes under. Rocking your hips back over your heels, picking your knees up off the floor. See how this dog pose feels. You can bend both knees, you can bend one knee at a time. How does dog pose feel? How do the shoulders feel? How does the head feel? Yes, and from dog, forward bend, rolling up into standing in your own time. Give yourself time though. So when you arrive in standing, give yourself time to arrive in, sorry, in your forward bend and standing. Very nice. Yes, I can see you, Sheila, that's very nice. Rolling up, touching the backs of your hands together. That's, thank you for reminding me. So we were doing our sun salute arms. So as you roll up, you can touch the backs of your hands together. You can take your arms wide. And then out in a big circle. give yourself a little shake out. So we're going to come on into a balance and then thinking about some length through the front and the back of the body. So settle down, feet hip width apart and parallel. <sighs> Let's just do a little bit of swaying from side to side. So I'm very, <laughs> as you know, I'm very fond of this sort of swaying in standing. As we sway, can we let the shoulders feel heavy? Good. Let's settle. Let's let a breath come in. Let's then take the right arm up. <sighs> but drop the right shoulder as much as possible. And we're going to be shifting the weight onto the right leg. So the right leg becomes heavy. The left heel can come off the floor. Can we let the left foot come up completely? Can we catch the top of the left foot? Have a breath or two with your right arm still up. 
and then bring your right hand to your breastbone. Just see how it feels to settle here. Let your bent knee drop towards the floor. If it's not comfortable to catch the foot, catch your trouser leg. Alice, just see if you can drop. Got a very good view of your knee. See if it can drop down more. That's very nice. Well done. Brilliant. Good. So we try and let the knee drop towards the floor as we settle in our balance or have the intention to settle. The reality may not be quite the same. Whenever you're ready, come down, have oh, a little bit of shake out, arms and legs, and settling back into standing. So starting by, you, know, you don't have to, but I always like to look at my feet, so sort of checking in with the eyes and then bringing your gaze forward. So you're gonna, your gaze is going to be forwards. Even as you take your arm up, don't look up, keep looking forwards. So left arm up, right arm heavy and relaxed. The weight is shifting into the left foot. So can we let the right heel come off the floor? How does it feel to let the right foot come off the floor completely? Catch the top of your foot or catch your trouser leg? <sighs> Just, what's it like to settle in this second side of the balance? We have this intention to be steady, but might not be reality. Your hand can come down to your breastbone. This place helps with steadiness. Letting the knee drop down towards the floor. Remember, you can always come and use the wall if one side is challenging. Let's see if you can settle and breathe. Good. Knee dropping down towards the floor. Wonderful, looks really great. Okay, come down, have a little bit of a shake out. We're going to come back to another balance in a little bit. Um, what I want us to do now, and I'm just going side on so you can see, is maybe both hands on your belly and to make this connection between starting to look up and the pelvis coming forwards. Okay. Um, Hilary, of course, remember in all of these options, you can bring your hand around the back of your head. So we're just going to keep it quite small to start with. This feeling of letting the weight shift forwards to the fronts of the feet, the pelvis comes forwards, we look up. And then we're going to go all the way down into a forward bend. So our weight goes back into the heels, the pelvis shifts back a bit, we let the arms go. Let a breath come in. As you exhale, roll back up into standing. Now, you're going to have one hand on your belly and one arm up, arm up either by the side of your head, or if like Hillary, you want to support your head, your hand can be around the back of your head. So again, we want to feel that the pelvis comes forwards as we bring our gaze up. We don't stay there long, we come back into another forward bend, let the arms go, bend your knees as much as you like. Let a breath come in. Roll back up again. Swap your arms over if you can remember. So the other hand on your belly, the other arm up by the side of your head or supporting your head. Letting your pelvis come forwards, letting your gaze come up. Opening out the front of your body. Back down into a forward bend again. We're going to do this once more. <sighs> Be floppy in your forward bend for a breath or two, and then rolling back up again. And so this time it's both arms up. It could be both arms by the side of your head. It could be both hands supporting your head. Remember, you can always, in this one, if your lower back needs to lengthen out more, bend your knees so you can drop your tailbone. And then all the way down into a forward bend. <sighs> let your head go, let your arms go. And this time we will go on into a squat from this forward bend, because again, that might be nice after those movements. So you don't have to go into a squat, but if you'd like to go into a squat, again, if you need something under your heels, otherwise letting your knees bend forwards, 
over your feet. It's fine if the heels come up. But again, if we want to have this chance to stay in our squat, maybe a support under the heels is good. Could be the mat rolled up. Again, if you wanted, if you liked that one, where you were bringing your hands around the back of your head to lengthen out the neck, go wide across the shoulders, you can do that. But it might be too much in a, a lunge, just be in the, sorry, the squat. Being in a squat might be enough. And then let's reverse the movement, come back into standing. So slide your support out from under your heels. Let the heels come up. And then set the heels down and the sit bones up. So you're back in your forward bend. Let your head go, let your arms go. Let a breath come in. And then exhale, rolling up into standing. <sighs> Have a little bit of a shake out. So once more, we're going to be coming to the back of the mat and we're going to be coming down to the floor and doing a couple of other things on the floor. Now, this time from dog pose, we're going to go from dog into lunge, uh, not into lunge, sorry, dog into plank on our way down. So you'll need to walk into a slightly longer dog. But again, settle yourself back of the mat, hands in prayer pose, feet hip width apart. Take a moment here to feel yourself in standing. Feet on the floor, hands touching, See if you can feel the flow of your breath. Let a breath come in and as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Drop the shoulders down away from the ears. Exhale, curling down, very soft and fluid into your forward bend and then walking forwards into dog. And remember from this dog, you're going to go on into plank pose. So you need to make it a slightly longer dog. And then C, and it might be as you rock forwards. So from dog, we've got our bottom up in the air. And as for plank, as you know, we're rocking forwards. So our shoulders come over our wrists and we're in a long straight line. And it might be at this point that you think we're not in the line. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at you. And don't, yeah, you don't have to. Very nice, yes, nice plank poses. Your gaze is level with just beyond your fingertips. It's very nice. And then <laughs> you have to stay there too long. Come down. If it's possible, sit back over your heels. Or if not, so either sit in kneeling or in up kneeling and shake your hands out. We'll come back to another plank in a moment. But first of all, we're going to come to back to here. So we were rocking with our toes tucked under. And Alice, you'll just, you know, just sort of do what you can with that foot because when you go, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a moment. So a little bit of rocking, shoulders forwards over the hands, shoulders, hips back over the heels. Because what we're going to do, we're sort of going, we're going to walk the hands in towards the knees and pick the knees up off the floor. So we're coming to this place. So it's like a little squat, but the heels are up. Can you spread your toes out here? And Alice, you might just come into the, yeah, you might could just do the rocking on hands and knees. And from this place, you're going to revisit an oldie, this delightful one, where you let your knees come down and you sit back over your heels, <laughs> stretching your feet. Oh, what a, what a pleasure. Alice, you might be quite pleased not to have to do this. So let your shoulders drop and then come forwards onto your hands. We are going to repeat that, but first of all, untuck your toes, drop your feet on the floor. This is the nice bit. <laughs> you can all do this. Oh. And then lengthen each leg back behind you in turn, tucking your toes under. That also feels nice. And then I'm afraid we're going to revisit that delightful foot stretch. See if it feels any better or maybe it even be worse. So back to hands and knees with your toes tucked under, rocking forwards and back. Toes tucked under, rocking forwards and back on hands and knees. 
And then when you're ready, rock your hips back over your heels, walk your hands in towards your knees, pick your knees up off the floor. So you're up on the balls of your feet in this sort of little squat with the heels up where we can spread the toes out. Take the little toe, maybe the big toes. You can do a little bit of rocking here. Letting the knees come towards the floor. So I'm on my, as you can maybe see, I'm on my fingertips for some balance. Yeah, you probably helpful. Or your knuckles. And then, oh joy, you can bring your hands down. No, your knees down onto the floor with your toes tucked under, sitting back over your heels, <sighs> letting your shoulders drop. Okay. Won't do too much of that one, it's pretty unpleasant. Come forwards, untuck your toes, drop your feet on the floor. Do get the benefit of this one, however. And then lengthen each leg out behind you. And then one last time, we're going to visit plank pose. So make sure, so when you took your leg back behind you, make sure there was room for your feet on your mat. And if not, move forwards a bit. So this plank pose we're going to from the ground. So organize your shoulders over your wrists. Lengthen one leg back behind you, add the other leg in, trying to feel yourself in the long straight line of plank from your shoulders, through your hips, to your heels, very nice. Your gaze is down at the floor, just slightly forwards of your fingertips, lovely. And just seeing how it feels, really stretch the heels away from you. Good. Oh, it's nice to see Wilf in the background, Donna. <laughs> so, and then whenever you've had enough, come back down into kneeling, up kneeling, down kneeling, shake your hands out. And we're going to be coming through dog pose into one last period of standing, into a little sequence in standing. So, big hand prints on the floor. It's coming into um, dog pose in a very, so it's very mindful, a very present way. So we've got these big hand prints on the floor. We tuck our toes under. You can come back to a little bit of that rocking forwards and back. And this time, whenever you're ready, from your rocked back position, you're going to move into dog. By resting through the arms, keeping the shoulders as relaxed as possible, picking the knees up off the floor. In this dog pose, if you wanted, you could visit some of your one-legged dogs. Yeah, so... You know all the different one leg dogs. If you want to do them in your dog pose, you're picking one leg up. You can have your pelvis level. You can roll your pelvis. There's the one I particularly like where you roll your pelvis and your top leg is straight and you stretch your heel behind you. And also that's it, Kate. You can also bend that top leg if you like. So the sort of foot falls back behind you. Remember the one leg dog poses are not ones to stay in. They're move, things we move through. We see how they feel. We maybe have a breath or two. And then we come back to just before you come into your forward bend, come into sort of a normal quiet dog pose for a breath or two. And then from dog pose, walking those hands on into your forward bend, arriving in your forward bend, feeling your weight in your heels, head, arms and shoulders heavy and floppy. And then touching the backs of your hands together, rolling up into standing, trailing your hands up the front of your body. So we come back up through the sun salute movement, Taking the arms up, breathing in, exhaling out. And then coming to settle. So <clears throat> we're going to be in a moment stepping one foot forward. So just make sure 
in settling yourself on your mat, you've got enough space to do that. So once more, having a look at your feet, feet hip width apart and parallel. Come back to swaying. So your weight comes over one leg and foot and over the other. So we're going to be doing a little sequence that will take us into a standing balance through some other movements, first of all. So from here, let your weight rock into your left foot and then pick up your right foot and step forwards. And then keep your right foot there and do a little bit of rocking forwards and back. So we've got our right foot stepped forwards. We've still got a hip width distance sideways. And we want to have a comfortable walking pace, not too little, not too big. So as we're shifting forwards and back, we come onto the heel of the front foot, the ball of the back foot, not both at the same time. Or we move through them as a bit of transition, but we want to be thinking about steadiness. And then eventually let both feet settle down on the floor. For the moment, both legs are straight, but not locked. And bring your hands onto your pelvis and maybe a couple of breaths here, just trying to feel really heavy, heavy pelvis, steady legs, planted feet. So everything from the waist down is going to be stable, stay where it is. If you bring your hands onto your low ribs, can you turn a little bit, but just from the waist up? Can you feel the ribs turn to the right and to the left? You could bring your fingertips onto your shoulders and turn to the right and to the left. So your pelvis is hopefully not turning. Yeah. If your feet feel that they're moving on the floor, then your pelvis is probably turning. What about with your fingertips on the crown of your head? Good. It's nice for feeling the length of those legs. And then let that go. You're going to bend your front knee. Keep the back leg straight for the moment. Bring your hands into prayer pose at your breastbone. And then from here, we're going to shift our weight into our front foot and lift the back foot off the floor, bending the knee. So we're in this cartoon runner position with both knees bent. And then from here, you're going to start to straighten both knees, reaching back with your left heel and letting your body tip forward. So reaching back, back, back with the left heel, letting the standing knee straighten, but not long. Very nice, good, good. That's it. So you go through your, you can always try again if you want. So through that sort of cartoon runner position where both knees are bent, your hands are in prayer pose at your breastbone, and then you start to reach back through the raised leg heel, the left heel. Reach back and as you're reaching back, you let your body tip forwards in response. Good, very nice. Come down, yeah, lovely. Come down, have a little shake out. So side two, you know where you're going. I don't know if that's better or worse, but let's just come into a forward bend before we do the other side, because sometimes that last balance is a bit tough for lower backs. So folding forwards for a couple of breaths, bending your knees as much as you like. <clears throat> Keep that, sit lovely. Letting the lower back lengthen out, keeping your weight in your heels. And then letting a breath come in. As you exhale, sinking into your heels, rolling up into your stand. So that second side, so from standing, a little bit of swaying, make sure you're in standing, feet hip width apart and parallel, a little bit of swaying to the right and to the left. Feel your weight come into your left foot. Feel your weight come into your right foot and then pick up your left foot and step forwards. And then make sure you've got your hip width distance still. Both feet are pointing forwards. Your step is neither too little nor too big. It's just right. And we can rock our weight forwards and back. So heel of the front foot, 
ball of the back foot, going on a little walk without actually bending. Feeling the footprints on the ground. And then settling down. And coming onto the pelvis, just feeling heavy, heavy pelvis, steady legs, planted feet. <sighs> Dropping the shoulders, a breath or two here. And then just like we did on the other side, the hands can come to the low ribs. So can we do a little bit of a twist, a little bit of turning to the right and to the left, but not below the waist. So this is going to feel very, <laughs> maybe very unnatural. Try to make this distinction between our upper body, which is light and mobile. We can bring the fingers onto the shoulders now. The upper body is light and mobile. And then from the waist down, we want to feel sort of quite heavy and planted, rooted. So sometimes in this, I imagine that I'm a plant um, in the soil. So from the waist down, that's the roots buried in the soil. From the waist up is the stem and the head is the flower. Release your arms, bend your front knee. Your hands come into prayer pose at your breastbone. So I've got my thumbs actually resting on my breastbone because that makes me feel more steady. Let your weight come into your front foot, come into this exaggerated runner's position where both knees are bent. And then the active thing is here, this reaching backwards with the right heel, straightening out that leg, letting our body tip forwards. Letting our standing knee straighten, but not long. Seeing how that feels. Letting the breath come in, letting the breath leave us. So we're long from our right heel to the crown of our head. Very nice, beautiful. You can try that a couple of times if you like. Yes, that's very helpful, Hilary. If you have something in front of you that you wanted to take your hand onto, to, you know, for a bit more support, that's absolutely Good idea. So if you want, if you want to try one last time, so remember we're starting. It's good to be quite steady, first of all, in this um, cartoon runner's position. The front standing knee bent, and then that reaching back of the right heel as we let our body tip forwards. And we may or may not get to where we want to get to. Good. But keep reaching with your back heel. Very nice, lovely. <sighs> Beautiful. Well done. One, having a shake out. So we're just going to, let me see, arms moving on. Let's just very briefly settle in standing. And feet hip width apart, a little bit of swaying. And we'll come back to that raising and dropping the shoulders. So from swaying, settle yourself down. Breathing in, let your shoulders come up and exhale, <sighs> drop the shoulders down. And do that a couple more times. So breathe in, gather your shoulders up towards your ears, exhale, <sighs> breathing in. <sighs> And then we're just going to settle with our breathing and standing for maybe three cycles of breath. I quite like to bring my hands onto the front of my body when I'm feeling my breath and standing. One hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. Come back to the tip nap hand, the little focus we've had breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. One more cycle of breath, breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing. And then releasing your arms. We're going to make our way down through a forward bend. One last squat, and this time into on into cobbler pose, or Sara into kneeling. So 
folding forwards. And I think maybe these movements are just being a flow of movements rather than staying anywhere too long. So folding into your forward bend and then bending the knees down into your squat. If you feel that you want to stay in your squat for a few breaths and put something under your heels, you can do. But otherwise, from your squat, using your hands on the floor behind yourself to lower yourself down into cobbler pose. So actually, if you did put something under your heels, then it's often helpful because you sit on it. And so Sarah in kneeling. And yes, if you're in cobbler pose, leaning back on your hands, Sarah in kneeling, you could do a little bit of tilting your pelvis forwards and back might be quite nice. So leaning back. So we're just going to do a little bit um, for our hips here. We're going to come into pinwheel. I've got a little variation in pinwheel I've been enjoying. And then we're going to do a tiny little bit of sitting and breathing with the, some other sections of the Thich Nhat Hanh meditation. So from your kneeling, Sarah, or from the rest of you from your cobbler pose, let one knee come on top of the other. Let your top leg slide back. So you've come on into pinwheel. We'll do a hip circle. But we're not going to do a huge amount of circling, so we're going to come back to the circling in a moment with a, over the different variations. So why don't you turn towards the knee that's going out to the side and fold down into your pinwheel forward bend and have a few breaths here. And just let the shoulders be as soft and relaxed as possible. Letting the breath come in, letting the breath leave you. And then from your pinwheel forward bend, walking your hands in towards you. And so I'll show you what I've been playing, I was playing around with just yesterday, was giving, doing this hug in pinwheel and letting my head fall forwards and then doing a bit of circling here. And this was really nice for the neck and the shoulders. So your hands could either be on your ribs or on your shoulders and let your head fall forwards. So you feel very wide across the back of the shoulders. This is important. You're letting you feeling wide across the back of the shoulders, which is why it might be nice to hold the shoulders and letting your head fall forwards. And a bit of circling here, see how that feels. Obviously, if you don't like it, don't do it. But um, I really like this. And then we can move on to side two of the pinwheel. So release your arms. Come to lean back onto this side. Let that top knee slide on top. Open your legs out. Or Sara through kneeling for a moment. Open your legs out for a moment in cobbler. And then on to side two. So again, we'll just do a little bit of normal circling. We'll come into our forward bend and then we'll do that circling, giving ourselves a hug, if you like it. And, um, part of what we do in yoga is try, try out all these things and then some are really helpful and others are maybe not helpful for, for us on any given day. So when you're ready, you can turn towards your knee, fold your body down over that thigh and have a few breaths there. Settling down through your elbows, maybe through your hands, through your forehead, through whatever parts of your body are in contact with the ground. Letting your shoulders and neck be as soft and relaxed as possible. And then walking your hands in towards you. Come to giving yourself a hug. If you can remember which arm you had on top, so I was thinking about it here and it probably, I think is, if you can do it comfortably, quite helpful to have your hands on your shoulders because it gives them something to hold on to and it helps the shoulders drop. Because what we don't want to feel is the shoulders are hunching up and we let the head fall forwards. So this whole part of ourselves, the back of the neck, the back of the shoulders can just feel very wide and open. You can do a little bit of circling here if you like. That's nice, lovely. Really nice. Well. 
deeper and then let the arms go. Take your weight back onto your hands. Give your legs a little bit of a lift out. So we're going to come into comfortable sitting now. So that might be kneeling, it might be cross-legged, it might be with your legs long and your back against the wall or the sofa or the bed. So make use of um, anything you have. I would definitely, yeah, if you want to sit with your legs long, Kate, you might want your back against something. I know you've got quite long hamstrings. It's just, yeah, because you need to be able to sit down. <sighs> And, um, gosh, I can see my <laughs> stripy top is creating havoc with the screen. Yeah, so you just need to be able to sit as easily as possible without having to worry about your sitting. So, and wherever you are, yeah, you can do a bit of circling. If, if you're sitting cross-legged, then you're, you might be fine with your knees hovering, but if you're sitting cross-legged and your knee is up a bit, it's always, I think you can see me, I put a cushion under one of my knees. And kneeling is another option. You know, if you're comfortable kneeling, this is always quite good as well. So let's, um, let's start with the first part of the meditation because it actually might be quite helpful um, to how we're sitting. So the first part of this meditation we're going to do, we're not going to be here for long, is aware of my body, I breathe in. So aware of my body, I breathe in. Relaxing my body, I breathe out. So see how this feels, where, how and where you're sitting. Aware of my body, I breathe in. Relaxing my body, I breathe out. So with the in-breath, we're aware of our body, perhaps any tensions. With our exhalation, we let our body relax and settle. So particularly the shoulders. If we have our hands resting on our thighs, can we drop the elbows? Again, breathing in, aware of my body. Relaxing my body, breathing out. And then changing the focus slightly, smiling to my body, I breathe in. So actually smile, because that relaxes your face. So smiling to my body, I breathe in. Easing my body, I breathe out. So just a few more cycles here. Smiling to the body as you breathe in, easing your body as you breathe out. And then from here, fold forwards a little, bring your hands onto the ground. And we're going to come to lie down and we're going to intersperse um, a few more sections of this meditation with some simple movements. So come to lie down either with your knees bent or your legs long. And we're going to revisit some of the movements we did at the beginning of class. So I think particularly those who, miss, who missed it, um, that might be nice. And for the rest of us, it's nice to revisit these things as well. So settling down onto your backs, make sure you're going to be warm enough. And I will talk you through. So we're going to start with some little movements. Um, we're going to start with these little movements of the head and focusing in on the head and the neck and the shoulders. 
So lying down on your, onto your back, either knees bent or legs long. And bringing your attention to the contact of your head on the floor. So feeling the weight of your head. And I, just like we did at the start of class, what you're going to do to start with is let your head roll from the centre to the right and back to the centre. So we're just doing a very small movement. The head rolls from the centre to the right, back to the centre, over to the right again. And keep the movement comfortable so you're not trying to go as far as you possibly can. You're staying well within your comfort zone. So the head rolling a couple more times from the centre to the right. And then try the same movement from the centre to the left. And so as we do these movements, so as we break it down a few times from the centre to the left, we can become much clearer about if we are feeling tight in the neck or shoulders, exactly where that tightness is located. And that helps us to be more mindful and look after our body. Better, perhaps. And then let the back of your head settle on the floor. And like we did at the beginning, we're going to take our fingers, take our hands up and start to just massage our neck a little bit. So it's a really nice position here to massage the neck. So you can have your fingers pressing and circling a bit either side of your spine. So it's very nice to do this here because um, we're supported by the floor. So make sure you keep the weight of your head on the floor. You can also massage up a bit into the base of your skull. Going down the sides of the neck. You can also go just into the tops of the shoulders, either side of the neck. So where we've got lots of those muscles can get very knotted up. You can be sort of squeezing, pressing, circling, depending what feels good. So all of this is so helpful. It encourages the blood flow here. Good. When you've had enough, you can then just let your hands and arms come down to rest because I was just thinking, yes, this is something we can't really do at the moment, can we? Have, have them here, so if we like having massage, we can't go and have one, unless we've got a willing, a willing member of our household. So then come back to rolling your head, and now let your head roll to the right and to the left. Keeping the head heavy. Easing it from side to side. And then settling the head down. And then we'll just come to another section of the Thich Nhat Hanh meditation. So if you wanted to rest your hands on the front of your body, you can do. And this is, a, I think, a really lovely section. It says, calming my body, I breathe in. Caring for my body, I breathe out. Calming my body, I breathe in. Caring for my body, I breathe out. So in taking the time to do some yoga today, you are caring for your body and you're calming your body as well. I'm doing the little massaging movements. We're giving our body a little bit of extra care. Calming my body, I breathe in. Caring for my body, I breathe out. We're going to do one more period of just a little bit of some easy movements and then we'll come back to the focus for our breathing again. So I'd like you to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. You can do this under your blanket if you've got one, that's absolutely fine. 
So bend your knees, stand your feet on the floor, feel the contact of your footprints on the floor, feel the back of your pelvis on the floor. Come to tilting your knees to the right and to the left. So I don't think we've done this yet today. I'm sure you're, that's nice, tilting the knees to the right and to the left. Lovely. See how it feels. Keeping it easy and comfortable, doing something that feels good for your body. If we think again about caring for my body. And then let the legs settle down. We'll come back to that in a moment. Either keep your knees bent or lengthen your legs out. And then we'll come to a movement that I know some of you like. Sometimes this one can feel a bit tight in the upper back, but it's so good for releasing it. So Alison, I saw you doing this towards the beginning of class. You're going to be bringing your arms up towards the ceiling, making a triangle with your arms, touching your hands together in prayer pose. So we keep the hands stuck together, we keep the elbows straight, we start to rock side to side across the upper back. So a really nice one for giving ourselves a little bit of a massage. If we want to massage a bit more across, higher up on the shoulders, we can bring our hands more so that over our head. If your knees are bent, try to make sure your knees are not also tilting, because if we want to really focus this movement in the upper, if it feels a bit tight, then make it really small. If you want the movement to come a bit lower down your back, you can bring your hands down so they're more over your belly, yeah? So you can change where you're rocking depending on where you have your hands. Okay, and then let the arms go. Let the arms come to rest. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then the last little bit of movement, come back to tilting your knees to the right and to the left. Lovely, and see how that feels. Really nice. And then we're going to finish settling on our backs with our breathing. So you might want to have your hands on the front of your body, it's up to you. Making sure you've got your blanket on, you, you can, if you like, so that you're warm. You're caring for your body. And so this again is another really lovely part of this meditation, the one we'll come to now. Breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slowly. So it's not about trying to force a deep breath. It's about giving ourselves plenty of time and space. So breathing in, my breath grows deep because you give yourself the time for the breath to flow in, travel within you, expand you. And as you exhale, breathing out, my breath goes slowly. Again, you give yourself time to be emptied completely by the outbreath. Deep and slow. Deep and slow. Breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slowly. And 
then let's finish where we started with breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. So we're not doing anything to the breathing. We're not trying to make it anything other than it is. Just aware of how the in-breath feels in our bodies, aware of how the out-breath feels as it leaves us. In and out. If your mind has drifted, which is what our mind does, just come back in one last time to your breathing. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing 